have you got that video ready? I want to do this in honor of the mothers today. I, I came across this and I thought this was just a unique clip, a, a song. So if you would go ahead. That we all would be lost without more. So thank you for loving me tenderly and showing me how to be strong. The least I can do after all you have done is thank you for being my mom. Thank you for being my mom. I just thought that was a beautiful song, and I want to talk to you a little bit about this today because it's Mother's Day and I know Ray you lost your mother just recently and the, you know nothing can take the place of mom in your heart but I want you to hear what I'm going to say you don't have to have given birth to a child to be a mother are, are you with me because there's there's a there's a lot of children that were birthed into this world but they didn't know the love of a mom and I, I came across a post 
on Facebook last night, and it was uh, Lindsay Seifert. You, people, I, I, we preached four years ago, and she put a post on there that really touched my heart, and she was doing it from the aspect of she's a guidance counselor. And she talked about, she said something I've learned and she was doing for high school, and she said is that there are a lot of things that just don't come natural for a mother that that just because you had a child doesn't mean that you got it that you that that you and and so she's navigated kids through hardships in life that felt like they were disconnected completely and and that they didn't have that relationship there and she said that she encouraged them or they'd been given a, a an assignment to write a letter to someone that had made a difference in their life and one of the high school girls came in and read her her letter and it was about her and she said she began to say and, and the girl broke down while she was reading it and she talked about how that there were days that the only reason she made it through was because Lindsay kept encouraging her and she was that bright light in her day and it made her reflect on her own mother and said, man, I gave you a hard time. I know, <laughs> you know, there were several years I gave you a hard time. She said, but one thing I know for certain, I was always loved. I was never pushed away. And you always trusted, you always believed, and you always shared with me about God. So I want to dedicate this message today to the heart of a mother and I, I, I'm going to speak to all of us, guys. This isn't just to women today. This is about, do you understand that God has a, I, I, I want to say this and you understand it, so I don't want anybody to misunderstand what I'm going to say, but there is a soft side to God, a gentle side to God. God created woman out of man. So it's literally a reflection of God's character. God has the masculine side, the protective side, but he also has that soft side, that caring side that's always there nurturing. And I think it's important that we understand that and then ascribe to try and be more like God. Amen? Amen. So I want to speak to you today for just a little while on this topic. The pain and the promise of letting go. Would you say that with me? The pain and the promise of letting go. Let me read a couple of scriptures for you today. In Proverbs 31 and 26, it's, this whole chapter is dedicated to the, the, the woman, the mother, the godly woman. It says, when she speaks, her words are wise, and she gives instructions with kindness. How many of you believe that that's something we all ought to ascribe to? That when she speaks, when, and it, that you don't have to be a she here, when we speak, we need to make sure that our words are wise and that we're giving instruction with kindness. I thought about Paul because Paul talks to Timothy, and if, if you're not careful, you miss this golden nugget that he sa says to Timothy, and it's 2 Timothy 1 and 5. He says, I remember, he's, remember now, he's writing to Timothy. He's, uh, he's not present with him. He's writing. And he says, I remember your genuine faith. For you share the faith that first filled your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice. And I know that that same faith continues strong in you. I want you to understand something today. There, there is something powerful about your faith and how it speaks to the next generation Amen. and how they pull from that. Now, I, I, grew up, I, I grew up not knowing about God. My parents didn't take me to church. So the, my, my mom and my dad, they taught me right from wrong, but I didn't have that background of church. I knew they loved me. I just didn't have that background of church. But what I found out was they did. 
And they had, they had I, for whatever reason, and I think about sometimes the hurts that drive us away from church or take us away from God, and whatever it was that took them away, I would be older before I started finding out that they had that in them. And let me tell you something, if it's in you, it's going to come out of you no matter how you try and suppress it or get away from it. He said, you train up a child in the way that they go, should go, and when they're old, they won't depart from it. Now, I want you to understand what I'm saying, but my, my kids left church. No, they can't depart <laughs> from what's in here. They may take a road trip or an excursion, but they're not going to be able to depart from what's been planted in there. And I was, I remember 15 years old and ended up going in to, we came down here to visit and we'd started to go to church and there was a, just outside of Goreville in a place called Happy Hollow. Thank God it wasn't Sleepy Hollow. A, a place called Happy Hollow. There is a block building that's still there to this day, I believe. The last time I was down there it was. And it was a little block church where my mother went to church. And somehow they were having a service. I'd been blacked by that building for years and never, never saw, knew that was a church or that they were having church in there. They were having church, and I went in there with my grandma Sullivan, my mom's mom. You could, have, you, you could have knocked me over with a feather when I saw what happened that night. I had no clue grandma had had an experience with God. But let me tell you something, a lot of us that try and suppress it or try and hide it, when you get around it, it's going to come up. <laughs> it's, and I got in that service and all of a sudden, man, my grandma stood up to testify and I, I looked around and I thought, grandma's testifying man she got to testifying and when she got to testifying all of a sudden she she started doing this and the next thing I did I thought what is going on with grandma and I thought the, the it's something that was embedded and ingrained and then later when I found out that my father had been raised in church and my brother believed that my dad had a call of God on his life and my grandfather had been a circuit riding preacher and, and my dad I don't know if he got hurt or what happened but he went away from it but he always told me what was right and what was wrong and before he left this world uh, he found that again and give me and, and I I'm just telling you this, that there's something powerful about the faith that's in you and how it can impact another generation. You say, well, Pastor, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm Sarah's age. I can't be having kids. That doesn't mean you can't be a mother. That doesn't mean you can't pour into a life, that you can't share an encouraging word with someone and help them see that there's a God there. The pain and the promise of letting go. I want to talk to you. That Zig Ziglar made this statement. He said, every choice you make has an end result. Every choice you make has an end result. Any of you ever looked at a, any of you ever have pizza? Wave your hand if you've ever had a piece of pizza. You know what I'm talking about? Now, you may think that's funny, but when my dad first introduced my mother to pizza, they called it pizza pie then. He came back from war and said, you want a piece of pie? Pizza pie. And she said, no, I don't want no piece of pie. He said, no, a pizza. And, and she finally figured out, so it was a brand new thing for her, introduced to pizza. And I like pizza, but I try and stay away from it. Why? Because I like it a little too much. <laughs> and every choice I make has an end result. You ever sit in front of a pizza and you're just going to have one piece? And then nobody else was around to share it with. And I just had one piece, the whole pie. <laughs> and then I felt bad about doing it. What are you getting at? I'm saying that every choice we make, life is filled with choices. 
and every choice I make has an end result. So I've got to make sure that I'm going before God with my choices because I don't want to end up with the wrong result. So let's, we're, we're going to take a look at some others today, all right? And let me just say this to you. Letting go is not giving up. It's trusting God. Letting go is not giving up. It's trusting God. Amen. There's a woman that she's married and she gets pregnant. And man, she got pregnant at a bad time. Because... The ruler of that nation had told all the midwives, every son that's born, kill him while you're delivering him. And those midwives wouldn't do it. They said, these are, and when the Pharaoh brought him in and said, what, what's going on? He said, these are lively women, man. They're not like us. You know, they, they, they have those babies out before we we're ever able to get there. And so he issued another decree. And this one went out to everybody, not just the midwives. And the decree that he issued was take every Hebrew baby boy and throw him in the Nile. Can you fathom living under that? And during that time, this woman had, go ahead and throw that picture up. This woman, her name is Jochebed. And, and Jochebed has a, yeah, Jochebed. Jochebed takes this baby and she hides him for three months until she can't hide him anymore. And she knows that if I try and hold on to him, I'm going to lose him. And so what she does is she has to let go. Everybody say, let go. So of all the places to let go, she takes him to the Nile, the very place that was supposed to take him out. She takes him to, puts him in a basket, and says, God, I'm trusting you. Everybody say it, I'm trusting you. And Jochebed discovered something. Jochebed discovered that what you let go of, God is able to bring back to you. That when you release it, he can do something with it. And what we, there, there's pain in letting go. But there's also a promise in letting go. And can I tell you that the promise is always going to outshine the pain when you learn how to let go. She let go of that boy. And it's the strangest thing, man, because I thought about what was going through her mind when she, I mean, sometimes we read stories, but we never step in their shoes and we never really, I've always done this. Whenever I've studied scripture, I've tried to place my feet in their sandals to feel what they were feeling. Otherwise, we miss the heart of the story. And I thought about Jochebed, and I thought, man, to take your baby and put him in a basket and set him in a river and have to walk away because you understand. You say, well, that's heartless. No, she understood that if she kept him, it meant certain destruction. But if she let him go, there's a chance that God might do something miraculous. <laughs> I wonder how uh, the tears she shed as she was going back home, her heart breaking. But I wonder what she felt when Miriam came running into the house and said, and carrying, <laughs> what are you doing? I put him in a river. I know. Pharaoh's daughter took him out of the river. <laughs> said take him to you and she gonna pay you for feeding him how many of you ladies got paid to feed your baby <laughs> oh man i'm telling you what god's got a way of doing miraculous things and so he grows up and he gets conflicted because everything the world had to offer was his for the taking but those 
few years of her nursing him and sharing with him who he is. Got planted way down deep inside of him. And when he walked out and he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, it was more than he could take. And I thought, you know, Moses gives me hope. Because he, he took the Egyptian. Now, I have, no, don't, <laughs> let me finish my thought here. Because Moses takes the Egyptian and he kills him and he buries him in the sand. And you say, Moses gives you hope? <laughs> yeah. How many of you have ever had somebody cut you off in traffic? You know, those, those, and, and, and those feelings you get, and I'm thinking, oh, and then, oh, got to reel yourself back in. And there was, Moses spent 40 years in the wilderness feeling like he blew it, and he messed up. Any of you ever been there? Wave your hand at me if you've ever felt like you've blown it. I wonder if you've ever felt like you've blown it to the point that there was nothing God could do with you. You know what I mean? That it was like, man, I mean, I, I didn't just blow it. I, I, I annihilated it. And, and God's got a way of bringing you to the end of yourself so you can let go. <laughs> and say, you know what, man, there's nothing I can do, and I'm just going to have to trust God. <laughs> and all of a sudden, Moses gets to that place where he trusts God, and the woman that delivered him he became her deliverer <laughs> and brought her out of Egypt. Amazing, isn't it? Profiles of courage, maybe, is what we ought to call this. Let me throw up that next picture, if you would. This lady had cried her eyes out at this same temple earlier in her life. The reason is because she had no children and the husband she was married to back then you could marry two wives i don't know why anybody would want to do that but you, you i mean one's enough for me <laughs> and i'm i'm blessed to have her but what i'm saying is this is that the other wife had kids and she was really An antagonizer. You ever met some people that just get under your skin? Don't point at anybody. <laughs> you know, somebody that just really kind <clears> of. <throat> and so every year when they went to the temple, Penina would antagonize Hannah and make fun of her and criticize her because she had no children. That's heartless. But then, how many of you have ever seen someone do something in your lifetime that you felt like was heartless? And you think, and then so it just gets to you, and she, there's nothing she can do and she goes to god and she begins to cry out in prayer and her heart is breaking and she's tired you know and you say well how i can't relate to that pastor uh, you know i am I'm, I'm a man i've never been maybe you can relate to this what it's like to have an unfruitful life and have people criticize you and point fingers at you and always tell you how worthless you are because that's what a woman was considered in those days if she didn't have children. I'm just telling you the history of it. They were considered worthless. Let's tie it to us today. When our life is unfruitful, when we feel like we've wasted it, and people look at you and make you feel like you're worthless and you don't count and you don't matter and you can't get anything right, and look at me, I'm okay. 
and, 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 and strutting and vaunting and, and, and holding all their stuff up and everything that God has done in their life. And you're over there feeling like you don't count and you don't matter and God doesn't hear. And you're trying to figure out why is this happening to me? All, all I want, God, is to be fruitful. I just want my life to produce something for you. And, and so you've got to let go. And she begins to cry out. And Eli, the high priest, sees her and thinks she's drunk because she's you ever pray and your mouth is moving but nothing's coming out of it Amen. you know you're you're praying on the inside and the mouth is moving but the words aren't being articulated and he looks at her and said man put your wine away woman we come in here drunk like that and and he's even letting her have it she could have got up and walked away disgruntled and said i can't believe it even the church treats me that way or she turned around and she looked at Eli and she said I'm not drunk my heart's breaking and I've just been asking God to help me and he said well may God grant your request and she changed her attitude how many of you have ever needed an attitude adjustment? She changed her attitude, and she quit focusing on what everyone was saying about her. She quit focusing on Penina. She quit focusing on what she didn't have, and she started focusing on what God promised her. Amen. I'm telling you, Amen. when you let... <laughs> When you let go, uh, there's pain involved. That topic was really good. Let me read it one more time. <laughs> the pain and the promise of letting go. So when she let go, there was pain involved. She was pouring it out, but then all of a sudden the promise came. And she holds a child and it comes time to go back to the temple, and this time she can go back and she can show that she got a baby, but she told God that if you'll give me a child, I'll give him back to you. Isn't it amazing how quick we forget what we promised God? Amen. Amen. Man, I promised God all kinds of things. I was, I was in a tornado in a van with a bunch of guys. That man was, I, I, they were all looking, they were all sitting in the chairs looking out the window <laughs> that we're on the back of the Mississippi River and man, that river's flying up like that and I am in the floorboard praying. I knew I shouldn't have been there to begin with and I am in the floorboard praying to God, God, you get me out of this and I promise you I'm going to serve you all the days of my life. <laughs> Sun was shining the next morning, birds were singing. I'll catch you later, God. Amen. You may forget what you promised him, but he didn't. <laughs> and I finally came through on my promise, <laughs> but he always comes through on his. Amen. Always comes through on his. And when she tells her husband, I can't go back to the temple with you right now I'm going to wait until he's weaned and I don't know you know scholars there's varying opinions on how old he was maybe five but when she I do know this that when she took him to the temple she left him there and she would see him once a year and I wonder how many times has she told him God gave you to me and I promised God that if he gave you to me, I would give you back to him. And there's, there's purpose and there's a plan that God has for your life. And I know it's going to work out. And then she walks away and has to leave him there. But hear me for just a second. I wish I had more time this morning. But all of a sudden, in the midst of all that, when she lets him, leaves him there, she, her love didn't stop. 
And she, man, she was bringing every year, she's getting, bringing him a new coat, man. And he was getting new clothes. And, you know, that was something back then. And, man, and, and she would come in and hug on him. I always thought about, I wish I, I wished I could have peeked in on that reunion when all of a sudden here come little say, Mommy, running down. And she grabbed him up and she, Jake him, and they'd love on each other. And she was giving him. And then all of a sudden, you know, it came time to leave. And he understood now that there was something bigger than he was uh, on his life. And, and, and here, let me show you how God works things because the Bible said that Samuel came along when there was no open vision, when there wasn't a word that was, when there was no revelation and there was corruption in the priesthood. Eli's sons were laying with women at the temple and all of a sudden God looked at it and God said, no, 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 no. This isn't going to keep going like this. And so he speaks to this little boy when the light had almost gone out in the temple. Let me tell you, before the light goes out, God is is going to show up before the lamp goes out God is going to build a fire of his own Samuel's trying to wrestle with it he's trying to understand it he never had God speak to him before three times he runs to Eli and then all of a sudden Eli realizes that God is going to speak to this boy and he said the next time he calls you say your servants here I'm listening and God showed up again, Sam. This time God called his name twice, Samuel. Samuel. And God began to unfold to that morning. Let me tell you what happened. All of a sudden, there's a unique passage of Scripture where it says that God did not allow any of Samuel's words to fall to the ground. And that they knew he was ordained to be a prophet. Do you understood, understand what happened when Hannah let go? It brought the word of God back to a nation. The boy that she let go of brought the word of God back to a people, brought the promise of God back to a people. I know that there's pain in letting go, but the promise is greater than the pain. Finally today, my last portrait of a mother, I want to talk to you about a young girl. She's not even married, having a baby out of wedlock while she's engaged. How dare her? Her circumstance is a little bit different than the ones that we see today. How so? She's called by God. Gabriel showed up at her house. She's listening to what Gabriel's got to say, and he said, you're highly favored among women. And, and she, he, he begins to tell her, he said, you're, you're, you're going to have a child, and you're going to call his name Jesus, and he's going to be known, and he's going to take away all the sins of his people, of the people. And she goes, but how, how can this happen? I've never even known a man. He said, are you ready for this? Buckle up your seatbelt. The Holy Spirit's going to overshadow you, and you're going to conceive, and that that's in you uh, is going to be holy. He'll be the Son of God. Uh, and I'm telling you, man, she was excited. Do you understand that she's called by God to carry uh, what Israel uh, had been waiting for for hundreds of years? Now, here's the next part of this exciting journey. She's the only one excited about it. Nobody else is excited. <laughs> As a matter of fact, everybody else is criticizing her for carrying what they've asked God for. Everybody else is ridiculing her. You, you, you need to understand something. Everyone's not going to be happy when you're expecting something from God. Any of you expecting something from God today? Wave your hand at me if you're expecting something from God. Go on. Those of you that are not waving your hand, come up here. I want to lay my hands on you. <laughs> what are you saying? I'm saying everybody needs to expect something from God. The moment you quit expecting from God is the moment your walk with God begins to slip. She's expecting. They're not happy. They're criticizing her. The other thing we need to learn from Mary is that sometimes people don't want to understand. Joseph goes to her and talks to her, and he, she's explaining to Joseph what happened. 
And he loves her. He can't help it. He loves her. Yeah, Mary. Right. Angel showed up. You felt a gust of wind. Voila. <laughs> I mean, how stupid do you think I am, Mary? Until the same angel that showed up to Mary showed up in Joseph's dreams. <laughs> and then she had someone in her corner. I'm going to tell you, friend, God will make sure there's someone in your corner. God will send somebody to help you navigate the journey. I thought, if you would throw that first picture up, I, I thought about his grand entrance when he, no, no, the one with Jesus in it. There we go. I thought about his grand entrance. You say grand entrance? He's, I mean, he's, he's born in a manger in a cave. It stinks. It's an, uh, hang on. See, here's the problem is what we consider grand oftentimes is stuff that's man-made. How come he wasn't in a palace? How come he wasn't in a golden crib? Those are just temporal things. Those are things that are going to pass away. His grand entrance <laughs> was an angel of choir, I mean, a choir of angels showing up <laughs> in the sky, man. And all of a sudden, I mean, there's shepherds on a hillside and they ain't never seen. What? Why? He said, you need to go in the city, man. There's something big going on downtown, Bethlehem. Yeah. Just go check it out. You're going to find a baby in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes. He's the son of God. And all of a sudden, man, they go down and they find him and they rush in and tell Mary what they'd seen don't you think that Mary's going oh my goodness man you saw what tell me that again tell me again and, and then all of it you know and he's still a baby and wise men show up later and start giving gold and frankincense and myrrh and you think wow Amen. there's a destiny on this boy's life only to have a grand exit Letting go the pain and the promise of letting go. I can't help it, but I, 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 I thought, if I'm Mary, I'm trying to, and I'm going, how can it end like this? How could this be? what God intended. He, there were angels that showed up when he was born. Now the earth is shaking. Wise men brought gold and now rocks are breaking. The sun has turned dark, not just in this world, but in my heart. How can this be? The pain of letting go, I promise, will be eclipsed by what God is going to do. <laughs> On Friday, her heart is breaking, and come Sunday morning, I said on Friday, tears are falling, and on Sunday, she's seen him like he was intended to be, uh, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, uh, the ruler of the universe. Uh, he said all power is given. Oh, you need to understand something, friend. Uh, the pain and the promise of letting go, uh, it will, uh, let me say it this way. Paul said that the sufferings we go through in this present time aren't even worthy to be compared to the glory that's going to be revealed in us. What are you saying? I'm saying there's a pain, but there's a promise in letting go. Would you stand with me today? So this is what I want you to do. I want you to take everyone by the hand. If you would, everyone, well, obviously you can't take everyone by the hand, but grab my hand. And, and this is what I want you to, to understand. And, and again, happy Mother's Day. But down deep in our hearts, 
if God abides in us, there's a mother in there. They told Jesus one time, your mother and your brothers are outside. He said, who is my mother? Or who is my brother? He said, those that do the will of God, the same are my mother and my brother. I want you to leave this place today with expectation. You're going to carry something out of here. God wants to work through your life. But I, I mean, my kids are raised. I, no, 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 no. You're carrying something. And you need to let God bring it to birth. A kind word to someone that's hurting. A smile. A card. You have no idea how powerful simple acts of kindness can be. So today, when we walk out of here, we're going to build an ark. An ark, an ark. Acts of random kindness. Build an ark. And it'll save somebody from the storm they're in. Would you pray with me right now? Father, we thank you for your love and your goodness. We just ask you today, God, to touch us. Lord, to pour into each heart, to let them carry the promise with hope. I know sometimes there can be some kicking going on. and that Lord, delivering the promise will be worth the pain. Help us build an ark to rescue the lost in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give him a hand clap of praise. God bless you today. We love you. Mothers, there's gifts outside for you. We hope you have a wonderful day.